Hi, I'm Dr. Jeff Bland, and have you ever had a time in your life where you've just got something stuck in your craw and you can't get rid of it and it just aggravates you? Well, such is the case for me, and I'm going to be sharing it with you. So hopefully uh, I can offload a little of my anxiety. This relates to this article that I've already spoken to uh, in the Journal of the American Medical Association that have appeared in February of, of 2019 entitled, The Rise of Pseudomedicine for Dementia and Brain Health. And you recall in that editorial, it was an op-ed was authored by three neurology uh, faculty at the University of California, San Francisco Medical School, really uh, attacking, I thought, quite aggressively um, those proponents of the fact that there can be something done about the prevention and management of dementia, Alzheimer's-related dementia, by uh, lifestyle intervention, particularly with diet. And um, this group really said there's no such thing as proven fact, and this was uh, anecdote and was exaggeration and was pseudoscience. And uh, ironically, they actually took off after one of their own colleagues in the department, Dr. Dale Bredesen, who, as you know, has uh, gained, uh, I think, justifiable respect uh, for his work that he's done in bringing to light the mechanisms that underlie how dietary intervention and multimodal uh, intervention, as he called it, can be helpful for both the prevention and treatment of Alzheimer's. So this has been sitting in the literature and really bothering me, this uh, op-ed piece in JAMA, because it seemed to be totally anti-scientific to me. And then I was reminded when I uh, saw a more recent paper in uh, in JAMA, with this one appeared uh, actually in the, um, the July 15th issue of 2019, uh, entitled Putting the new Alzheimer's disease amyloid tau neurodegeneration diagnostic system to the test. And the reason this is interesting is that uh, it's a uh, discussion of a new test for early assessment of potential risk and, and uh, progression of Alzheimer's based upon the presence of tau protein and phosphorylated tau uh, in a blood test uh, that would give early warning assessment. In other words, pre-stage uh, three Alzheimer's assessment. And uh, the authors of this article were extolling the virtues of this test by saying, by using this now, we'll be able to much earlier understand the advantage that might occur through some interventions that people could undergo to prevent the progression of Alzheimer's. And uh, so now we have a new test developing that uh, couples together with intervention alternative approaches. And that then takes us back to the Dr. Dale Bredesen, uh, quote, uh, pseudo-medicine approaches towards improving cognitive health. And I'm reminded as I went through my mental arithmetic and, and memory that uh, it was a number of years ago, back when I was doing uh, our monthly audio magazine called Functional Medicine Update, that we had the privilege of interviewing uh, Dr. Martha Moore, Morris, um, who was at the Rush Medical Center in Chicago, about the program that they were developing and studying there for uh, early stage Alzheimer's. And uh, called me the MIND program, M-I-N-D was the acronym. And uh, actually they published results on this uh, intervention trial using diet intervention uh, in early stage cognitive decline uh, back in um, 2015 uh, in Alzheimer's uh, Dementia Journal and showing very positive effects of intervention with uh, lifestyle and diet intervention uh, towards early stage progression of Alzheimer's disease. So this was, uh, to me, already in the literature, starting uh, fairly early in 2015. Uh, and then I was reminded that it was not too long after that that an extraordinary paper was published in The Lancet uh, from an intervention trial that was ongoing in, uh, in Finland, the so-called FINGER study. Uh, this was a two-year multi-domain intervention trial of diet exercise and cognitive training uh, monitoring uh, versus controls uh, per, uh, cognitive decline in at-risk populations for Alzheimer's disease. And this was a randomized controlled trial. And you might recall the uh, results of this were extraordinarily, uh, I think, optimistic. Uh, and I quote, um, the finding from this large, long-term randomized control trial suggests that a multi-domain intervention could improve and maintain cognitive functioning uh, in a risk uh, uh, high group of elderly people uh, in the general population. And so this is like the multimodal program that uh, Dr. Bredesen was talking about with his distinction being a little bit more personalization, a little bit more specificity as it relates to the intervention for the individual. But here in kind of a general multi-domain approach, 
that was seen uh, in this Finnish study, the finger, finger trial, to have very positive impact on uh, reducing the uh, progression of, uh, of dementia. Then we go on and more recently see studies being published out of the finger trial group uh, that looked at things like telomere length, or telomeres which are kind of a surrogate marker for uh, aging and age-related uh, problems and effects on the multi-domain um, of, uh, of dementia-related uh, function. And I'm now quoting from the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease. This is 2017 in a more recent paper showing that this uh, finger intervention trial in Finland led to increased length of the telomeres and also a reduction uh, in cognitive decline, actually an improvement in cognitive function, again with diet and lifestyle intervention. I'm uh, quoting now, published clinical research from academic centers demonstrating a positive effect, which uh, uh, to me is uh, antithetical to this, quote, pseudo-medicine reputation that was thrown out, I think, glibly by the uh, neurologist uh, at uh, UCSF in their op-ed piece in, uh, in JAMA. And then we go on to look at a 24-month intervention uh, review of the prodromal Alzheimer's disease in, in another randomized double-blind controlled trial. This appeared in the Lancet Neurology issue in, um, in 2017, again showing positive impact after two years of a uh, multimodal intervention program in people with early stage Alzheimer. And then uh, more recently than that, 2018 in Alzheimer's and dementia, multi-domain lifestyle intervention benefits a large elderly population at risk for cognitive decline and dementia, regardless of their baseline characteristics. This is another uh, extension of the data from the FINGER trial in Finland. Does this seem like it's a repetitive outcome from these types of trials? I think so. And then we go to ask the question, well, what happens if we use some of these new scanning technologies to look for uh, injury to the brain prior to the uh, pathological uh, presentation of Alzheimer's? And, and now we're starting to see some very, very interesting um, studies being published out of prediction of brain age and uh, using new scanning technologies uh, and, and imaging technologies that are associated also with um, new uh, informatics uh, abilities to do uh, advanced uh, machine learning to actually determine what level of injury the brain has actually had well before the onset of, uh, of dementia, showing again that these techniques that can be uh, now used to assess early stage uh, can demonstrate positive benefit with intervention with diet and lifestyle in the reduction of uh, progression of uh, cognitive decline. And then lastly, as if we didn't have enough, let's go most recently to 2019. And I now uh, quote from Scientific American. Uh, this was a July uh, 16, 2019 uh, article in Scientific American entitled Alzheimer's Meeting, Lifestyle Factor Are Best and Only Bet Now for Reducing Dementia risk. Let me say it again. Lifestyle interventions are best and the only proven way to reduce dementia risk as contrasted to all the drugs that have been thrown in experiment against this condition that have been unsuccessful in producing positive outcome. And in fact, many of them have produced negative outcome. And so if that were not enough, let's just top this off. <laughs> Again, going back to JAMA, the same journal that in February published the op-ed piece about pseudomedicine and dementia. And now we go to July of 2019 with an article entitled Association of Lifestyle and Genetic Risk with Incidence of Dementia. And what do you think this article said? It says that among older adults uh, with cognitive uh, impairment uh, or dementia, that intervention with uh, lifestyle and diet uh, led to a significant improvement uh, in their cognitive function and a reduction in the progression towards increasing dementia. And this uh, work, again, has been done in a very reputable institute of uh, medical research published in a high-grade uh, peer-reviewed uh, journal, the Journal of the American Medical Association, the same journal that published the op-ed piece around pseudomedicine and dementia related to lifestyle and diet intervention. Does there seem to be something wrong here as it relates to how all this fits together and how one makes intelligent decisions as to how to move forward when the media picks up on the pseudomedicine article but doesn't really discuss extensively 
these more subsequent clinical intervention trial results that show lifestyle intervention and diet intervention as a positive and only way to actually reduce the incidence of dementia going forward in which there is no drug available to produce the same result. I think I'll quit here by saying I've now unburdened myself with my angst, given it over to you. What are we going to do about this? I think what we're going to do is we're going to personalize diet and lifestyle and make this successful to reduce and beat back the burden of unnecessary dementia.